Hello everyone, welcome to this session, Hacking Streams and Collectors. So it's about streams and collectors, right? And about hacking too. Uh, this is just the title of the session, Hacking Streams and Collectors. Uh, my name is Jose, I put some links on the, on the first slide where you can find different content I, I publish on the web. I'm a Java champion and a Java rock star. Even if I'm not a musician, you can be a rock star without being a musician in the Java space, which is great. Uh, I would just like to begin with the, 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 quick, uh, the quick poll. Th thank you for being so, so numerous here. I'm ju just amazed to see how many people there are in this room. Uh, how many of you are working with Java 8 in your sense? All right, I'd say two thirds of the audience. That's great. Java 7 or, or earlier still? Okay, that's still, yeah, 30%, something like that. Uh, how, how many people never uh, wrote a single line of code using streams and lambdas and collectors and things like that? Are there people like that? Yes? Okay, some of them, two or three. Mm, might be a little tricky to follow this session, sorry about that. And uh, are there any people here thinking that they are a seasoned stream and collector developers? Okay, two or three, two. I've got content for you too, don't worry. You'll see, you'll see what I mean. All right. I've got, in fact, I've got two versions of this presentation, I, and, and I've not chosen yet which one I should do to you. I've got one uh, slide only, passionate bullet points, stuff like that, and one live coding only. Which, which, one, which, which one do you prefer? The second one. The, second one. The, second one. the bullet point one. Oh. Well, no? I, sorry, I can't hear you. Hey guys, the coffee was not strong enough this morning. Okay, next year you would get strong coffee. <laughs> like pudding, right? Okay, 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 okay. So I, I heard some of you like the bullet point, so I do not want to make any frustration. So here, a bullet point only slide, all right? There are 42 of them, you can count them, right? And that's it, sorry. Uh, just one more slide, if you have any questions, especially people on YouTube, you, you, you can just uh, uh, use Twitter to ask questions. If you're in the room and you have questions, either you shout it loud, so maybe you can grab some more coffee. There are two mics with two uh, uh, volunteers here that will, okay, run around, great, for the mic, so you can use the mic, but make some noise because I'll be very fast and I'm, I'm kind of deaf so I might not hear you. Okay. Demo time. And, and I'm not kidding, this is the, not the last slide, the next slide is the thank you slide that I will pass at the end of the, uh, of the talk. So we are done with the, with the slide. Thank you, okay. This is code. Ah, don't you feel better? All right, so this is about stream. This is a list of streams, very good. You know that in Java 8 we have new methods on, on, the, on collection. Sorry, I need to wear my glasses for, to read my own screen, okay. Is it big enough, by the way, for everyone to see? Okay, great. You know that if I do this kind of thing, strings for each, for each is a new, new uh, well, it's a new method. A method introduced in Java 8 on the iterable interface, and it just takes uh, a consumer, which I can write using a lambda. Okay, if I write this kind of code and run it, and I'm going to use this to run this code, Okay, I know, thank you. But the control match F10 doesn't work on, my, on this laptop, I don't know why. Okay, it just prints out all the elements of the stream. This is not stream code, this is just barely collection code. But what I can do is sneak here this little call stream. And on the stream object, I also have a for each method that does exactly the same. So you could think, okay, a stream is some kind of collection, same as a collection. It's not the case at all. A stream is a completely different object from a collection with different methods and different paradigm in it. All right? The main difference and the biggest difference between a stream and a collection is that in a stream you do not have any object. In a collection you have object, an array list, there are objects in it, in an array, same for the link list, same for the hash set and so on. In a stream you do not have any object. And this is a fundamental difference between stream and collection. What can I do with this stream? Let us get rid of this guy. Well, I've got two methods that you might already have heard about. The first is a map method. A map method allows one to transform the object of the stream. You can change the type of the object or you can change the object itself. 
Here I'm just providing a function that will put all the strings to uppercase. Great. And I also have a filter method, not find first, filter, thank you, that takes a predicate as a parameter. Predicate is a functional interface from Java 8. And I can select, for instance, the strings shorter than three characters. And if I run this code, okay, the result is the one I expected. Only the strings with three characters, less than three characters, put in uppercase. Map and filter are methods from the stream interface. They do not exist on the collection interface. And each of them create a new stream object. This is, that is, the result of this call is a stream object that is different from the stream object returned by this call. And the same goes for the filter object. So a stream does not operate object in place, it creates a new object. So you could say, all right, maybe it would have been more efficient to, to, to reuse the same object. But in fact, since we said that a stream does not hold the object it processes, creating new stream object is a free process. A stream object is a very lightweight object, there's basically nothing in it. So you can create new stream on the fly, right? So how does this API work? This API works in the way that the, the stream object will pull objects, for, yeah, the stream object itself will pull the object it processes from a source. In the case of the first stream, the source is the list itself. And in the case of the second and third streams returned by the map on the filter object, the source is another stream. So a stream can be the source of objects for another stream. This is a way to define some kind of data processing pipeline in a very, uh, very efficient way. Great. What we can do with it? Let us, let us play a little with it uh, with, uh, with more method. I, I've got, for instance, a skip method. Skip three, right? This skip method will just, sorry, this is not what I wanted to do. The, the skip method just skips the three first objects of the stream, and you need to be wary about what stream object you're operating on. If, I, if I'm running the skip three uh, here, it will operate on that stream object. This is the stream object that will consume all the objects. So I am skipping those three objects here. But if I had made this skip at the end of it, for instance here, I wouldn't have operated on the same stream object, but rather on the result of the filter, uh, filter operation. And the result, of course, would not have been the same, since I had four objects after the filter operation. The three, four filtered objects would have been removed. So uh, the order of the operation you put on a stream is very important. Uh, it's not a global operation. It's, just a step, it's really a step-by-step -step operation when you are designing that. And the same goes for the, for the limit, limit uh, operator. For instance, if I limit 3 here, at the end of the day, I have an empty stream. Why? Because I limited this stream to three objects there. Then the map and the filter operated on these three object streams. And since I skipped the three object of that, I ended up with an empty stream. So, yes, a stream can be empty at the end of the day due to the filter operation or skips or limits uh, operation. I could play a little more with it. For instance, if I skip three there and limit, uh, for instance, ten there, the result would be much different. And in fact, it's the same as, as the other one. Why? Because the limit 10 here, since the filter, the stream only returns two objects, the limit 10 will not suppress any object for the stream. So the order of the operation we are writing on the data processing pipeline built on the stream uh, API is very important. You need to be, to, be, uh, to be fully aware of that. OK. Let us, if you have any question, you raise your hand, right? Question there? No? OK. Let us, uh, let us carry on. Uh, ah, yeah, with this one. I am going to modify this and to just take the first letter of every, sorry, of all the strings I have. Substring, see which one. 
and reduce code. Ah, sorry. Okay, I do not need the filter anymore because all the strings are just one character. Here I have all the first letter of my stream. I can call, for instance, I can, I'm going to get rid of this one because I do not need it anymore. The distinct operator. The distinct operator is just an operator that will remove the doubles on my stream. And after that, I can also call the sorted operator. The sorted operator will just sort the element of the stream. Since it is a stream of, of string of characters, it will sort them in the natural order that is in the, in the, in the alphabetical order. Now, the way the distinct operator works and sorted operator is very different from the map operator. The map operator takes an object, transforms it, and returns that object immediately. The filter operator takes an object, applies the predicate on this object. If the predicate is true, it will transmit that object. If it's false, it will just throw this object away. Fairly easy to understand. The distinct operator will only return the doubles of the stream. So you see that it has to, to handle some kind of internal buffer, take an object from the stream. Did I already see that object? If I, if I did not, I have to recall this object in a buffer and transmit it. If I did, all right, it means it's already in the buffer, so I do not need to add it to this buffer anymore, but I will throw this object away. So the distinct uh, operator needs to keep track of the object it transmits. It will going to consume memory and it will going to handle an internal state as work. But it will still transmit objects as long as the stream is being consumed. The sorted is, is even worse because if you want to sort all the objects of the stream, you need to record all the objects in an internal buffer and then when you know that you have all those objects, you can sort them using a, a quick sort algorithm, of course. You can sort them and then begin to transmit them. So the, the sort operator will kind of block uh, the, your, your data processing pipeline, all the objects coming through, the through your stream. It will have to record all of them and wait for the uh, upstream uh, operator to, to produce all its objects before beginning to, to the transmission of the objects. Th those operators are, are different from the map and filter operator and you, you need to have that in mind when you're designing uh, data processing pipelines. There are some uh, operators that are called stateless and some other operators that are called stateful. Now, this thing and sorted are not really stateful. Uh, the limit and the skip are stateful, but, but they don't work the same as the map and filter uh, operator. Great. Um, let us take a look as, at another operator, for instance. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah? You can pass a comparator to the sorted method here. All right? So if you are not, the question was, I'm going to repeat the question. The question is, how can you compare, how does the sort method can work uh, if the object? The distinct, the distinct method. Oh, the distinct relies, there is a hash set in it. So it relies on the equals and hash code methods from the object you are comparing. OK? And, and, oops, and the sorted method, you can pass a comparator as a parameter in case you. Uh, the, the objects are not comparable, or in case you want to compare them using another uh, comparison. For instance, I could do something like that. Let me uh, separate the substring here, and I can use this uh, comparator comparing string lengths, and this time it will sort the strings uh, from the shorter to the, to the longer. So it's another order uh, than the, the alphabetical order. I can do that also. Any, any other questions? No? Okay, great. Um, yes, uh, I'm, I'm going to put that again. Oh, well, I can keep this comparator, it's nice. I've got a peak method, which kind of works the same as the for each method. This peak method will just take a consumer as a parameter, and it allows me to just watch what objects are going through that stream at that point of my data processing pipeline. If I'm running this code again, Okay, you see that I have, well, I can't really see that, but I have first the objects printed by the peak operator here, and the object printed by the uh, for each system out printed and, uh, operator here. So it's a very nice uh, way of debugging screens if you have problems understanding what, what things are 
are doing inside, you can just uh, use this peak operator. Now, this peak operator has been really introduced for debugging purposes, so you should not use that in, uh, in production. Uh, and, and do not do any kind of side effect using this peak operator. It's a very bad idea to do that. But what, what you could ask yourself is the following. Let us just replace this for each method with a peak method to here. And let us try to run this code. What is going to happen? Nothing, yes, nothing. Nothing is going to happen. Why? Because this peak operator returns itself a stream, okay? A stream of string. Let's call this stream, import the right stuff, right? The, the for each method uh, returns void, so I couldn't, of course, put uh, the void in the variables. <laughs> you can't do that in Java. Um, okay, so this is a stream, so this stream is computed, but since there is no object in a stream, in fact, it does not trigger any computation. The, the data from the source is not consumed when I, when I do this kind of thing. If I want to do this kind of thing, I need to process this stream, and for instance, stream.count, all right? Count the number of objects, long.count, print out the result. And then it will trigger, the, the count call will trigger the processing of the data. So the peak operation will be called, and of course the result will be computed. This, uh, this is the difference between what is called a terminal and, a, and an intermediate operation. A terminal operation uh, triggers the computation of the stream, the, the processing of the data in that stream, whereas the, the intermediate operation does not. Now, if you want to tell an intermediate operation from a terminal operation, you have two solutions. Either you read the manual, because it's written in the Java doc, Either you just check the signature of the method. If the method reads on the stream, it is intermediate. And if, it, if it does not, even if it does return a void, it is a terminal operation. And if you do not have any terminal operation on the stream, you can just remove this code from your, from your application, because it is basically dead code. All right. Um, let us see another example. I'm going to create a stream. The stream of class, stream of classes, in that way, stream.iterate. I'm going to choose a class, for instance, a realist.class. This class, I'm sure I have it on my laptop. Could you import this class for me? Thank you. And I'm going to pass a unary operator to this iterate method that will just take the super class. Okay, so how does this iterate factory method work? It takes the first element as a seed of that stream and will apply this unary operator again and again on, on, the, on, the, on the stream, uh, and, uh, sorry, on the class, and then on the resulting class and so on. So a, re a release, a strike list, I don't know what, then end up with objects. At some point, if I do that, uh, C will become null because get superclass on object returns null, so maybe I can write some code. If C equals nil, then I return nil. And if it doesn't, I return a get subclass. If I do not do that, I will get a null pointer exception. And you will laugh at me, and I don't want that. So, okay. <laughs> and you'll be right to laugh at me. <laughs> OK, let us put the result of this in a, in a list. I'm going to use a collector, right? Well, if you've already messed up with the stream interface, I guess you all know this collector probably the first character you can see, and I'm going to put this in a, in a variable. All right, let's do that again. Uh, good, okay. Thank you. And I'm going to print, print out the, just the size of this list. Okay. And if I run this code, what is going to happen? Sorry? Oh yeah, you're right. I should correct this stream. Thank you. If I run this code, what is going to happen? Ah, compatible time. Yes, because it's a stream of class, of course. Okay, what is going to happen? <laughs> Come on. Ah, yeah. All right, it took some time, but I ran out of space, and I got a out of memory error. What happened? 
Well, I told you that a stream was able to connect to a source, and this source can be any kind of source. The difference between a, a source of a stream and a list is that this source might uh, generate object, and when I, when I connect my stream and begin the processing, I do not know how many objects are going to be created by this source, first point. And second point, this source can generate an infinite number of objects. In fact, the stream I have created here never stops, all right? After generating the object class, it will generate null again, 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 and again. So I just kept adding nulls at one gigahertz <laughs> speed uh, in, in the Java memory, creating a huge array list, huge enough to, to break down the memory of the JVM. What, how, how can I handle that? Well, I have a special set of a terminal operation called the uh, shortcut operation. I'm going to show that to you. I can say, all right, I'm going to, for instance, filter uh, the object of this stream and just keep the class if it's the object class and then call find first. Now, find first returns an optional. I'm not going into details in that. An optional is a special object made to handle empty streams. There are good theoretical reasons for optional to be there. There's a very good um, talk by uh, Stuart Marx uh, on YouTube about, on, on this subject. This returns, uh, hopefully, a class. Uh, I'm going to call it class, All right? And since I have filtered only one element on that stream, Okay, which is the object class. Of course, the result. I'm going to uh, just comment out this code. Print out this class. This class, of course, is the object class. But the, the point is that the find first method will interrupt the stream after, after a certain point. So I can handle infinite stream using a shortcutting operation. Now, it doesn't quite solve my problem because the problem I have is I would like to create the list of all the hierarchy starting at the real list and ending up on the object class. So I would like to interrupt that stream from the inside of that stream itself with, a, with a, probably an intermediate operation or something like that. The problem is that in Java 8, I do not have any tool to do that. I have a special uh, intermediate operation that do that in Java 9 when we have Java 9, hopefully in a few, few weeks now, or a few, few months now. If I, if I want to do that in Java 8, I need to create a splitterator. A splitterator is a special object that is uh, the same kind of object. You, you know, in collection you have iterator, and it's fairly easy to implement your own iterator if you wish. In, in, in the stream space, you have the splitterator, which is not, not very hard to, to implement. Uh, in fact, we are going to do that. Well, at least I will try. I'm, I'm going to create an interrupt, interrupt splitterator. Okay, splitterator. And I'm going to create it on this stream object here. So new uh, interrupt splitterator. Pass this stream, the, st the, the splitterator of this stream as a parameter. And the false boolean because this is the parallel boolean to handle parallel streams, and I do not want to handle parallel stream. I'm going to add a T here, okay? And I'm going to create that as in, uh, in a class, right? It will be an internal splitterator of T. That is going to take a splitterator of T as a parameter. It will be nice like that, like that, okay? And this is the parallel boolean. Why don't you like it? You should, you should like this one. Uh, sorry? Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's a class. Yes, right. Okay. And this should, of course, implement the split orator of T. Great. Let us ask our ID to generate the methods. And I'm going to add the get comparator method, by the way. Okay, so to implement a split iterator, I need to implement all those methods. This get comparator method is, is very, very easy to do. Okay, and I'm just going to uh, um, 
Could you? Uh, you don't want to do that for me? OK. This split iterator equals split iterator. OK. And I want to add this as a field. Great. And the parallel, uh, parallel stuff, I do not need it. OK? So I'm built on a split iterator. It's very easy to do. In fact, this comparator will be just wired on the, on the comparator of, of the split iterator. This is, this is a, a mandatory in the case of, uh, of sorted streams. Um, characteristics is just, I'm not going into details here, but it is, in fact, a word that will tell you if the stream is distinct, ordered, sorted, etc. So I'm just going to wire things on, on the stuff. Estimated size, I can return zero. It means that I cannot estimate the size of the stream. And in the case of infinite stream, it is really the case. Try split, I can leave it to near because it's only called if you want to go parallel. And I don't want to go parallel. Okay, so I'm left with the implementation of the try advance method. Now the try advance method is a, is a tricky one because it, in fact it does two things. First, it should return true if this stream uh, is going to consume more objects or produce more objects. And when you want to consume an object, you need to call the action.accept method. This is a callback method, right? It is called by the stream API itself. Since I want to interrupt my stream when I find null objects, what I'm going to do is create a Boolean as more. That is true. This is a Boolean. Okay, Boolean with an N, thank you. If I have more elements, then I will do something. If it's not the case, then I will not consume any object and just return false, telling the stream API that this split iterator is done producing objects. Now, if I have more objects, what I need to do is, in fact, just return uh, true here and consume the object, returning, uh, calling the try advance method on the underlying split iterator and providing the consumer, sorry, uh, action accept T. If I leave it like that, it will work exactly the same as the underlying split iterator. That is, the, splitter, the underlying split iterator is providing the objects I'm not looking at this object, I'm just transmitting it in the current split iterator. But now, what I should do is act here, because precisely this object T, which is one of the class generated by this guy, okay, can be null at some point. And if I encounter a null object, this is when I want to interrupt my stream. So, what I need to do here, say, okay, if T is nil. Remember, t is my class. Then it means that I do not have any more objects. So has more. Sorry, becomes false. And I do not want to consume this nil object since I do not want any nil object in my in my resulting stream. Okay. And if t is not nil, then it's fine. I'm going to consume that object. Okay. And keep this as more uh, boolean true. Now, if I am going to okay, get rid of those, I do not need this code anymore. I have created my uh, interrupted split iterator. Now, my stream of class is uh, the underlying split iterator of this interrupted split iterator. So, what I need to do, sorry, is create a stream directly on this split iterator, and the pattern is the following: stream support dot stream, pass this split iterator as a parameter. The false boolean, since it is not, uh, um, sorry, a parallel stream. Why is not happy with the stuff? Oh yeah, you're right. Split iterator is a split iterator of class of blah, blah, blah. So this is a list of class of question mark, All right? This is the result of my correct. So now if I run this code, you'll see that, that my, okay, <laughs> maybe I should uh, just print out the list itself. Okay. You see that I do not have any more uh, out of memory exception. 
my stream has been interrupted by this custom split array type. Right? Okay? So this is hacking. The split orator is extremely useful uh, for, for this kind of thing. And if you want to connect your data processing pipeline on custom sources, if you have uh, sources of data that are non-standard, you can implement your own split orator uh, to do that. It's not, well, it's not completely easy. It's a little harder than the iterator, but it's very powerful. If you're interested in that, I've got uh, an API on GitHub called Streams Utils with um, between 15 and 20 split orators, custom split orators to do many things on the stream interface. Right? Questions? Yeah? Yeah, please. Yeah? Yeah? Yes, but it doesn't matter, really. You, you, can, you could return the ASMR uh, and then call it, call it just once more, but yeah, we can do that. Yeah, sure. It was the same. If you, you can return ASMO here. Okay, <laughs> if you want to do that, then, then you do not need the ASMO anymore. It makes the, the example slightly more complicated. Right. Any more questions? Okay, was it clear for everyone? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Second part of the live demo. We're going to talk about collectors now because it's hacking streams and collectors. Okay, collectors are um, an object that you pass to the, to the collect method of the stream interface. The collect method of the stream interface is uh, a terminal operation that allows you to do really uh, many things with the stream. I have a, a, a real size example here called the, the movie example. Okay, if I run this code, Right, not this one, but this one. Yes, thank you. I need to get rid of this plugin. It's great, but... So I've got a, a set of movies. There are like 14,000 of movies in this, in this, uh, in a file. In fact, the, the movie reader is reading a, a text file, a huge text file with plenty of movies on it. It's on my GitHub account, so you can check that. Uh, I've got, I've got for, for roughly 14,000 movies in it. And if you, for each movie, I have a release year, a title, and the list of actors that played uh, in that movie. So we can, we can just play with it. We have, oh yes, we don't have much time for that. So wh what I can do is, uh, for instance, uh, I'm going to skip some of the examples, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, create the histogram of the movies, movies.stream, and collect them. And the most popular collectors after the two list collectors that I just show you, showed you is the grouping by collector. You know the grouping by collector already? Yeah, it's a great collector. It's, it's made to, to create maps. I'm just passing uh, a function that is called the key extractor. And the key extractor is a function that takes a movie and returns, for instance, the release year of that movie. Okay, what does it create? It creates a map. The keys are the, uh, the object returned by this, uh, by this function. So here it's an integer because a year is an integer. It would be the year, the release year of each movie. And all the movies uh, released during this year will be aggregated in a list. And this is the resulting map. Yes, you can import that. All right. Now, this map is, of course, quite big because I've got 14,000 movies. What I can do is pass a second collector as a parameter, for instance, the counting collector. This collector will just be applied to the list of movies here. I guess I must have like a hundred lists because it's a number of year of release year for movies, so probably have uh, roughly a hundred of them. So I've got a hundred lists, and this collector will be used to collect all the lists here, and the counting collector will transform those lists into longs. It counts them, and the count method on the stream interface returns the long. It's not the same as the size uh, of the list. So it's really an histogram of the movie. Now, uh, in a year. Now, if I if I want to know in, during which which year uh, the most the, the biggest number of movies have been released, I need to post process this map. Now, a map is not a collection. It could be a collection of of, uh, of map entry, but it's not the case. If I need if I want to process this map using the stream API, it's possible, but I need to call this entry set 
dot stream method, which will create a second stream distinct from the first one on the entry set of this map. And from there, I can uh, take the max, for instance. This max will take a comparator as a parameter. I'm going to use one of the factory method of this comparator uh, object. This uh, factory method takes an, uh, a function that takes an object here of the stream being compared. It's an entry. It's an entry of this map. Okay, and I want to compare these entries using the value of those entries, that is the long, so it's just entry.getValue. It's a max, a max returns an optional, so I'm just going to call the get method uh, to open this optional. I'm sure that this optional is not empty because my map is not empty, so I can safely call the get, and of course, instead of a map, it will return the best entry of the map, which is in fact the year with the most movies. Okay, let us print out the result. <coughs> Run this code. All right, so according to my file, in 1997, I've got 700 movies that were released, which is nice. I didn't see all of them, of course. <laughs> Maybe you did. Okay, so this, this, uh, this way of writing things is nice, but you see that it's a two steps a process, and I would like to make it a one-step process. In fact, here I'm creating a map. Okay, let, let, it, let me put this collector in a, in a variable. And here I've got a, a post-processing of this map, which could be seen as a function. Let me write this function. Function that takes, I'm going to copy-paste this, a map of integer and long. And that will extract the best key value pair, map entry of integer of long. Uh, and I'm going to call that a finisher, and you're going to see why. Okay, it takes a map and process this, does this processing on this map. Okay, so this is, this is just a function. And this is my post processing function. Why I, I, I wrote it like that? Because just to show you that, in fact, a collector, all the collectors follow the same model. They just take a stream of objects, all right? And here you can see the way of the, the template generics for this collector. It just means that it takes a stream of movie and will return, the collect method will return, will build, create a map of integer and long. And, and this guy here, we do not need it. It's also a map, by the way. All right? So this is what the collector tells us. And I've got another collector that is called collectors collecting and then, that can in fact take a collector as a parameter itself, and what is called a finisher, which is a function used to post-process the result of the first collector. And this is going to do the trick. All right, so I have merged those two steps in only one collector uses the, using this collecting and then stuff. Maybe it leads to more readable code, because there are less uh, lines of code in it, but it mostly leads to very powerful pattern. I'm going to take a second example. Um, I told you that I had 14,000 movies in this stream. I'm going to count the number of actors in it, movies.stream, and for that I'm going to, to use a, an operator I didn't show you in the first part on the stream, which is called the flat map uh, operator. The flat map operator takes a special kind of function, movie, movie dot actors. Actors is a list of actors, it's the list of the actors that played in that movie. And I can, of course, create a stream out of this list, just like that. How does, how does the flat map operator work? It's very, very simple. It takes the stream of movie. It will transform this stream of 14,000 movies into 14,000 streams of actors and flatten everything. Create one big stream with all the actors in it. So I've probably got many actors in it. Let, let us just count the results. Okay. Long count equal and print out this guy. F10. 
right? Yes, I have uh, a lot, a lot of factors in it. But there are doubles because if an actor played in two movies, it will appear twice in that. So I can also call the distinct there to see how many different actors I have, and I still have like uh, a lot of actors. <laughs> 170,000 different actors in this. So this is, this is a real file. This is a real small database. What about um, trying to, to, to get to know which actor played in the biggest number of movies? In fact, it's, I'm, I'm very close to it, and I have all the elements to do, it, to do that. On this stream, if an actor played in two movies, it appears twice in this stream. So I'm going to count the number of times each actor appears in that stream. It's once again an histogram, so it's a job for the collectors that grouping by. What, is the, what I want to group this stream by with? Well, with the actor itself. Okay? It just takes the identity function, and this, this will do the trick. And then I'm not interested in the list of actors, because I know the actor. So I'm just want, I just want to count the number of times this actor is appearing. Okay, so this is a map of actor and long. I'm going to call it map two. I've got an actor object uh, some, some, somewhere in my, on, my, on my project, right? And now what I want to do is extract the max according to the value that is exactly the same code I wrote here. So I'm just going to copy paste this guy. All right, and this is going to a map of entry of actor and long. And if I, so this is, this is the most seen actor. Great. Most seen actor, let us run this code. You see that even if I have uh, roughly 200,000 elements of my stream, it's pretty fast. And this, this laptop is not particularly new, so it's not a, a very fast laptop. So the most seen actor, which is, by the way, the most heard actor, because in fact is a guy who gives his voice to a cartoon characters, is called Frank Velker, and uh, 92 movies yeah, has been seen in. Great. Okay, I could do the same kind of thing, that is, put this collector in a variable, uh, grouping by one, okay, it's not a great name, but let us live with it. And create a function that is going to be the same kind of function I've been using that takes a map of actor and long and returns the map entry of actor and long. This is my finisher too. Okay, and yes, it's almost this code. I just need to put Take some map and post-process this map using the same kind of, of code as, as previously. By the way, this comparator can also be written like this, because on the map entry interface, I've got factory method uh, for, for comparator, so I can also write it like this, which is very nice. I love it. So I can, in fact, simplify this code once more by doing collectors dot collecting and then pass this grouping by one, not that great uh, as a name, not very uh, software craftsmanship, right? And get rid of this code. And I think I'm missing a closing stuff there, and this should, this should work, it should be okay. Yes, the result is the same. So you see that I can do the same kind of trick, the same kind of trick here. Do yes, I just have the time for my last example, great. You love it, you see that. What I would like to do now is the most seen actor during a year. Okay? Same kind of question, but this time I want to process that in a year. And you see that the beginning of this code will be something like that. Movies.stream. And then I would like to collect this stream using a collectors grouping by movie movie really zero and here I need some kind of downstream collector that will do exactly the same as this operation because in fact what I want to do is write this operation flat map then collect and pass this as a collector as a downstream collector to the map I'm building here if I'm, if I'm able to do that 
then this, this pattern, this, this problem is, can be solved very easily. So the trick is how to create a collector that will do both the flat map and the collecting and then grouping by blah, blah, blah. All right? the, the fact is we do not have any uh, ready-to-use API in Java 8 for that. We will have them in Java 9. There are three collectors appearing in Java 9, flat mapping, filtering, and mapping, we already have it in, in Java 7. Flat mapping and, and filtering. If you want to do that in Java 8, I'm going to uh, comment out this code. We need to write our own collector. It's a hacking session, so we're going to do that. It's not, it's not very hard. What I need to do to create is, in fact, a collector. Okay? That will take a stream of movie and return a, uh, return a, a map. Ah, I'm going to have troubles there. Okay, let us do it in, in, in the other way. I need, I need to create a collector. I'm going to, uh, to, uh, to put it in a factory method. Uh, I'm going to call that uh, custom collector. Right? And this custom collector will be built out of the flat mapper, which is, uh, in fact, the function that takes a movie and returns the stream of actor. This is my flat mapper. Stream of actor, movie, movie, that actors, that stream, okay. And it will take just this other collector here, which I'm going to put in a variable, which is my collecting and then uh, collector. Okay, so it will take the second... Uh, okay, so this custom collector will take this flat mapper as a parameter, and this collecting and then collector as the second stuff. So I can call this method flat mapper collector, and the collector it will return will take a movie as a parameter, whatever the central uh, generic, and will return this guy, map and tree of actor and long. All right. Of course, this method does not exist. And maybe I could put it in a variable for it to work. Let us create that. Okay, so the return type is this collector movie map and tree. This is the name of the method. This is the first argument, and this is the second argument. Okay, for it to work, I'm going to put a generic instead of this question mark, because if I do not, I will have trouble. Because the question mark will, will be an object, and if it's an object, it will, it will not work. And I'm going to implement the collector interface directly and ask my idea to help me that. The collector interface, in fact, relies on, on, on four methods, which is not, not that nice, so it's, it's a bit complex, but in fact, since I am uh, building on a collecting and then collector, I can rely on that for most of the method. This set of characteristics should not be new, so I'm, just going to, I'm not going to detail in that and just return an empty set, right? No characteristics, never mind. The finisher is the finisher of this downstream collector. Okay. The combiner is used in parallel. I'm not going to, to have this combiner. And the supplier is in fact the builder that will be used to create the resulting map. So I'm just also going to rely, sorry, not the finisher, the supplier, on the supplier by this, uh, all this collector. And now I need to return a big consumer of A and movie, and, and this is the tricky part. It's a big consumer of A. A is the container built by this collecting and then uh, collector here, so I'm, can, I can call it collector. And the second element is the movie collector. Okay. And it does not return anything, and I'm very happy with it because I could just do nothing here. If I see, if, if I just do that, it will compile, so I'm very happy. But it won't do many things. What do I want to do? I want to consume movies 
transform them using my flat mapper here, get a stream of actors, and consume all the actors using the downstream collector. So it's, it's not that hard to write. Okay, I've got my movie. I will pass that movie to my flat mapper, apply movie. This is a stream of actor. Remember, this flat mapper is this guy here. Okay. So this is my flat mapper. And for each actor, this is an actor. I want to consume this actor using the underlying collector that is here. So just call the combiner, sorry, the accumulator of this guy and call the accept methods because it is a big consumer with the container here and the actor that is there. Right? So I'm just taking a movie. If this movie has five actors, I will call this code five times and this is exactly what I want. And now I have my collector, so what I can do, take back this code, call this flat map collector there, all right? This is uh, hopefully my map of integer and uh, map entry of actor and long, because this is the return type of this collector, I'm good to call it map3, does compile, it's probably a miracle. <laughs> All right, and then I need to post-process it using the same kind of code I already wrote several times. The only difference is the comparator I'm going to, to use because this entry set is an entry of this map and I want to compare using this field here. So I'm going to take the entry and it will be entry.getValue. The value is itself another entry. Right, so call the get value once more to get the long that is here. And this will return, of course, not a map, but a map entry of this stuff. And this will be the most seen actor in a year. Let us print out the result. Where am I? Okay, run this code. And this time, in 1999, Mr. Phil Holm played in 24 movies. So you see that what we did is just model our data processing pipeline in a single collector. And once you've done that, you can pass this collector as a downstream collector to uh, another processing to further process the data. All right. And I think the clock is, is, is lit off, so it means that I'm out of time, right? Yeah? OK, I'm probably out of time. Okay. Uh, thank you for your attention. This was a this was a real hacking session, I think. Live coding. If you have any questions, thank you. If you have any, if you, if we have time, we are out of time. But if okay, the organizers are here. So if you want to cut it off, just do it. Hello. Question? Yeah. Hello. Okay. Uh, what do you think about the reactive streams that are coming in Java nine? because that will be far more powerful than the current implementation? I think the answer is in your question, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's not a real question. Yeah. <laughs> what do I think of them? It's great to have a flow interface in 9, all right? It's not, it's not the same API as the stream. It's not because there is the stream name in reactive stream and stream that you're dealing with the same kind of thing. Uh, if, you, if your application needs reactive stream, you need to, have to use reactive streams. But if it, this, this is not reactive at all. This is a, a pull model. A reactive stream is a push model. It has nothing to do. It's very different. So it, it, it solves different kinds of problems. If your problems fit in the reactive stream, it would be ridiculous to use the stream API. But if, it's, if, if it does not, do not use reactive stream just because you think it's cool. You need to use the right tool for the right job, I think. Yes, this is my answer. Thank you. Any other questions? Come on, guy. Okay, stronger coffee for, for, for next year because people are asleep. <laughs> any other questions? No? Okay, if you have any questions, just grab me in the, in the venue. I'll be there. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thanks to the organizers. This is a great conference. <laughs>